Hey everyone, uh, Dr. Trujillo here. I'm going to teach you about orthodontic equilibrium theory because the thing is, is that everything exists together in a delicate balance. And as king or dentist, we need to understand that balance from the crawling cheek to the leaping tongue or something like that. I love that movie. Uh, if you've never seen The Lion King, uh, I apologize for that terrible reenactment there. Uh, but really, our teeth do exist in their current position in a delicate balance known as the orthodontic equilibrium balance. Uh, what that means is we have pressure from the tongue, we have pressure from the cheeks, we have pressure from the lips, uh, that is really holding those teeth in their current position. If a patient suddenly lost their cheek for some reason, uh, maybe it had to be resected due to some crazy tropical infection or something like that, uh, their teeth would have no pressure pushing them in, the tongue pressure would win, and the teeth would basically all flare out, and we see that. We see that exact same scenario happen in real life. Also, uh, if a patient is a mouth breather, so the patient is, has chronic allergies or maybe inflamed tonsils or adenoids that are enlarged and they have increased nasal resistance and when they're trying to breathe, they cannot breathe adequately through their nose and so they are constantly have their mouth open. Now if you always have your mouth open, that puts more pressure on your cheeks, which causes a narrow palate. It also uh, creates an environment where the sphenooccipital synchondrosis, which is that growth plate, that interstitial growth plate in cranial base to kind of adapt. And we start to kind of grow that direction. So the environment is what's causing our teeth not only to move to their position, but also our skeleton. And we see that a lot actually with crossbites. You may have heard that uh, if you have a crossbite and you're young, you need to correct it. You do not wait until you're you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. There's a reason for that. Uh, one reason is that a crossbite can traumatize your tooth and cause periodontal problems and recession. But it also, if you have a crossbite and you try to bite down, you kind of hit prematurely and you shift. And when you have this long standing shift take place, we start to grow in that direction and we introduce an asymmetry, a skeletal asymmetry that then becomes more complicated to correct later. So that's just the orthodontic equilibrium theory in effect right there. So I have a list of like 10 to 12 common uh, things that could be impacting our equilibrium theory that I just wanted to touch on. So the first one I just said was the mouth breather, right? The mouth breather, also known as the adenoid face or the long face. I have a little bit of a long face uh, myself, actually. I uh, had my tonsils out when I was younger um, because I couldn't really breathe, but, uh, and other issues. And the, the mouth breathing can cause a long face, it can cause a narrow palate, and it can create a typical phenotypical expression on how we look. So another uh, habit could be a finger sucking habit. So your tongue actually rests in the roof of your mouth typically, and it provides lateral force. It's kind of holding the teeth out, the cheeks are pushing them in, right? We have that equilibrium theory right there. Well, if you replace your tongue with your thumb, then you're actually not getting that lateral pressure from the tongue. The teeth start to collapse in, the palate becomes very narrow, and now we have a common phenotypical expression of what we see, which is that narrow palate open bite, uh, common with thumb sucking or other habits like that. Uh, there's tongue position. Some patients just have a forward tongue or perhaps a uh, a tongue thrust. So every time they swallow, they have a habit of thrusting their teeth for their tongue forward, which is causing over time an open bite. Sudden periodontal changes. Uh, patients who suddenly undergo acute periodontal disease, you know, that's kind of messing with that equilibrium. If your teeth are firm in place, we have this much pressure pushing on them from the cheek, this much pressure from the tongue, and suddenly they become looser, then we can start to see uh, changes in our alignment of our teeth. 
common complaint of patients with periodontal disease would be something like, oh, my teeth were great and then all of a sudden they just all started moving. <laughs> well, when I hear that, something that pops into my mind oftentimes is, hmm, I wonder if there's any active periodontal disease that needs to be evaluated here. Sudden facial paralysis. Uh, strokes or Bell's palsy. If a patient has a stroke and loses muscle tonicity to the right side of their face, uh, we have a disruption in that equilibrium and we can start to see changes in our teeth also. Facial traumas or surgeries. That would be like uh, if a patient has a cleft lip or palate, they oftentimes will have surgeries when they're younger while they're growing. So as you know, as we grow and get older, our jaws, our top and bottom jaw actually grows forward, down and forward um, over time through our growth spurts. And if we have a surgery that's causing scar tissue and kind of changing the structure of our soft tissue, now we have a different tonicity there, a different elasticity of our soft tissue, and now it kind of inhibits that growth. So we'll oftentimes see uh, patients with cleft lip and palate almost always will have a maxillary deficiency because the jaw is not growing forward because of that disruption in equilibrium. Lip bumpers are based off this whole process. If you put a lip bumper in someone, a uh, lip bumper is just an appliance that goes on the bottom jaw and it has this lip shield so that the lip can't push against the teeth. What we see when we place a lip bumper is the tongue wins and 10 to 12 months later, all this crowding and constriction of the lower teeth is suddenly corrected and you can even end up with space that you have to close at the end. Although that is a equilibrium, so you have to ask yourself, what happens when we remove the lip bumper and now the lips reintroduce it? Um, so there, it's a very a complex interrelated process. So that's lip bumpers. We have a tongue thrust swallow, which I mentioned, an enlarged tongue. Some patients just have larger tongues. There's certain genetic conditions or uh, certain uh, disorders that can actually cause an enlarged tongue. With that, we'll see open bites in the front. We may see lateral open bites in the back. If a patient it has an enlarged tongue and they're constantly biting on their tongue in the posterior, then you may see a posterior open bite in the back. Uh, also, we mentioned cross bites can create functional shifts. So those are really uh, just some main things that we see that could be causing all these malocclusions or these phenotypes that we're seeing uh, just in our everyday patients that can be explained uh, with the orthodontic equilibrium theory. Let's see, is there's anything else there um, Really, one thing I'd, I'd like to also bring up is that your patient may present with a certain phenotype, say a posterior open bite. And as an orthodontist, you really need to be like, hmm, what's causing this posterior open bite? Kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Because if you have a space between your teeth, you create a tongue thrust. So for example, if you have an open bite, every time you swallow, your tongue will thrust forward to create a seal. Just try it. Try to swallow uh, right now uh, with your mouth open. It's kind of hard, right? <laughs> you can't really swallow with your mouth open because you have to create a seal. Well, if you have an open bite, well, what caused the open? Did the tongue thrust cause the open bite or did the open bite cause the tongue thrust? So you really have to be a detective and sometimes it's problem solving. Sometimes you place appliances, you do these things and hmm, the open bite's not closing. Maybe the tongue wasn't the cause of it in the first place. Maybe there's another thing going on such as uh, an ankylosis or a hyperdivergent backward rotation growth pattern or things like that. So using uh, principles from the orthodontic equilibrium theory, it allows you to be able to be a better detective to really look at the cause and effect of malocclusions and the cause and effect of skeletal patterns so that you can diagnose your patient, come up with a treatment plan, and achieve your ideal result. So I hope you found that helpful and thank you for listening. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends if you found this helpful and we will see you soon. Thanks.